so thank you guys for joining us. And um, as Autodesk is making the move from the multi-user licensing to the standalone or the named user or the single user licensing, whatever they want to call it, um, we get a, a lot of questions on the support side and from the sales side. So we put this webinar together to kind of go over some of those hot questions that keep coming in uh, to kind of help the users uh, and the contract managers as we're rolling into this uh, new licensing format. So what we're going to take a look at today is, you know, can we run both named and shared at the same time? How long do we have to take, or how long do we have to make the transition? Do users have to log in and out every time? Uh, how do we assign licenses via the Autodesk uh, accounts portal? Is there any prep work we can do uh, ahead of time before the go live switch? Uh, do we have to uninstall, reinstall, things like that? So as we get into this, uh, one of the biggest ones is, can we run the named user and the shared uh, network licenses during the transition? And no, um, we cannot. So once the, the contract goes live, we have a 30 day window to make the switch over to the, uh, the new standalone or single user licensing. And once you assign users licensing to the, uh, the Autodesk accounts uh, portal, if they already have an account, uh, it's just toggled on. If they don't have an account yet, they'll receive an email from Autodesk uh, where they go in, they create their own password uh, for the account, and then the license shows up in their account. Then they can sign in and activate it from there. But you do have that 30-day window. Uh, as a contract manager, uh, if you're already utilizing uh, the network seats and you have users added, you can export that list via a CSV file and then import that in once the uh, contract live switch uh, is enabled. And that way you've already got those users in there and you just assign the software. Otherwise, you can just type them in as you go and add them as needed. Uh, once you're in there, you can look at your usage, uh, who's utilizing the softwares, uh, how often they're utilizing the software and so forth how many seats are available and things like that uh, inside the Autodesk accounts portal. So again, you, you, as you go into the, uh, the transition over to the go live, you've got a 30 day switch uh, from when your contract renews to when the, uh, the standalone or the single user seats have to be inactive. So it's not like it happens at midnight and you have to do it tomorrow. You do have that 30 day window to work off of. So are users required to log in and out every time they launch, they launch Inventor, Vault, or AutoCAD? No, they do not. Um, the users are logged in uh, to the software when they activate it or enable it the first time for authorization. They can log in inside the software themselves uh, as their own account. They can sign out if they would like, but they don't have to. Uh, the software will kind of do a phone home uh, once every 30 days to uh, validate the license. Uh, internet access is not required every day, but once every 30 days it is to verify the licensing. Uh, if we are using the shared views or any of the cloud services, internet access is required uh, for those to uh, work properly. But again, as long as uh, your guys, uh, users, uh, hit the internet every 30 days to validate the license, you are good to go. Um, if after 30 days, we haven't, or we've been traveling, or it's been out on the shop floor, uh, then the software will not open. We just have to connect to the internet, log out, log back in, and then you're good to go there. But if the users don't want to be logged in inside of AutoCAD or Inventor or Vault, uh, in the upper right-hand corner of that screen, they can uh, hit the little pull down next to their name and select sign out. That will sign them out of the account. The license is still good for the 30-day period, uh, or they can stay logged in there as well. So what has to happen on the end user's machine, whether it's the shop floor guy, the project manager, the CAD users, the uh, checkers, whatever it is, uh, when we're transitioning from this. Well, inside the uh, software, under that little pull down, whether you're logged in, uh, in my case where it says Mark Dooley is my username, or otherwise just where it says sign in, and you select manage license. And this will enable you to switch the licensing side. And so uh, depending on the version of software you're using, whether it's 2019, 2020, or 2021, you may see a different screen than what I'm showing here. So on the Vault 2020 side, uh, if I hit change, or if I hit the manage license, I'm going to see a change option. 
on Inventor 2021 and Vault 2021, uh, I have the change license type. So either one, so after we select the uh, manage license, you select change or change license type. And then the next screen you're gonna see will again vary based off 2020 or 2021. And if it's the single user, we wanna log in as the user, we hit the single user option. If we want to enter a serial number that has been assigned to us, we select the enter a serial number or enter a serial number there. Either one will work when we're utilizing the, uh, the standalone licensing here. And then the next screen will ask us to uh, log in with our Autodesk account username uh, and our password. And that is all that is required to uh, make the switch there. Now, how do we assign licenses uh, via the Autodesk Accounts portal. Well, inside the Autodesk Accounts webpage, uh, whether you're a primary or a secondary admin, uh, you can do this. And under the user management option, uh, select by product, and it will show you the products that are available, the number of seats that are available for each product. So in this case here, I've got 37 seats available at the AEC con uh, collection, 17 available on the media collection, and 35 on the product design. And so I select whichever collection I'm trying to assign seats from. And then it tells me again how many I've got available. And then I select assign users. And then I can pick from the previously used uh, users down below, or I can just type in uh, the email address and the name that I'm looking for there. So I'll show you guys an example here on this one. So inside the, uh, the Autodesk accounts page, it's manage.autodesk.com. And I will come over to the by product. And as this loads up here, uh, here's the same screenshot I was just looking at. And I select the uh, PDMC, the product design and manufacturing collection. And I want to assign users uh, to a software here. And so then I just type in first name, uh, last name, and email address. So if I start typing my own name in here, it's going to see that I've been added here before. If this is a user that has not been added before, so there's Kindred, he's been in. If I started adding Clayton or Forrest or someone else, uh, first name, last name, and then put the email address there and then the little brackets around it, and it pops up there at the bottom, and now I can send Clayton an invite, and he will receive an email within 24 hours. Uh, sometimes it's faster than that. We have seen instances where it does take up to 24 hours for the email to get through the system, and Clayton will receive an email here, and he would be assigned one of the seats inside the uh, product design collection there. But that's it, we go in, we hit assign users. Um, if we have a a list of users that he want to do ahead of time, we can do that uh, so that we can import those when we come in here. Makes it a lot easier uh, on the uh, contract manager side. But that's kind of the prep work there uh, is we would hit that import to assign and then upload that uh, CSV file. And if we are going to do a CSV file uh, for the prep work ahead of time before the transition over to the contract live date. Uh, just set it up easily. Three columns, first name, last name, and email address, and then add your users in there, and then you can import that in. And it goes right into the software. Uh, you can start assigning it there, and it's very easy to work with. All right, so uh, one of the last important questions here is do you have to reinstall the software or uninstall the software? And the answer is no. Uh, if you're already using the collections, absolutely not. Um, we're just gonna use that manage license option uh, to change the license type. If you're transitioning from the old uh, legacy product suites, the product design suite or the factory design suite or the building design suite, then yes, we would have to uninstall the suite and then install the softwares that are assigned to us. Uh, but for the most part, if you're already using the collections, absolutely not. We just use the uh, toggle there to uh, switch the licenses. And if we're inside of Inventor uh, or AutoCAD, hit the little pull down, manage license, where I go to change license type here. And I can switch user if I'm logging in or logging out or it's a new machine, or if I've got the serial number here, I come in, I select enter serial number, and then I enter in the serial number that's been assigned to me. 
and I go right through that. If it's in the, uh, the vault side, same thing. Hit the little pull down, uh, manage license, and change my license type. And then again, I can switch user, I can enter my serial number there. Uh, very easy to uh, enable that here on the desktop uh, so that I don't have to uninstall and reinstall on my machine or five machines or 20 machines or 40 machines or how many is in your environment. All right, so with that short little presentation, we will uh, flip it over here to some questions and uh, see if you guys have any going on that Dave or I can address for you guys. Okay, Mark, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yes, sir. Okay, this is uh, Dave Benning, the Service and Support Coordinator for Hagerman and Company. I do have two questions that have been posted. And the first one is, when does the 30-day window start as far as the transition period? All right, so that 30-day transition window starts at the renewal date of your software. So if it's December 1st, you've got December 31st. If it's December 15th, you've got till January 15th. And so that 30-day window varies from company to company based off of when your contract renewal date is. And the second question that I have posted here, can licenses be unassigned and reassigned as needed? Absolutely. Um, as you unassign them, it could take a couple of hours uh, to get through the system. The next, if the software is already launched and loaded for that user, it's not going to kill it. It's not going to send a signal that says shut down AutoCAD or Inventor. But the next time they launch it and it's no longer assigned, they will receive a licen licensing issue it says, hey, there's no license available. Please contact your contract administrator. But yes, you can unassign and reassign licenses uh, daily if you needed to, weekly, whatever it is. But yeah, if you bring in an intern or if you're moving someone into the department to finish up a project and you want to assign them a seat of AutoCAD uh, for this week, absolutely, you can assign it and then unassign it over the weekend or whenever the project is completed. And uh, then you're good to go. But yep, you can assign and reassign and unassign as often as you would like. Another question I have here, and I may want to tackle this one, is this switch to the single user applicable to government software? Uh, they're about to renew their subscription and the rep has not mentioned the switch. The meetings that I have attended, the webinars pertaining to the switch and government packaging, it seemed that the government accounts were going to give uh, have this option to switch to single user, but there are some considerations as far as security and continuing to use multi-user licenses. That is something that we can research for you if you wanted to send me your, your name and email address. Uh, as it was a gray area when we had the initial talks and I can find out if there's any kind of clarification on exactly what they're gonna do with those government accounts. Perfect answer, thank you, sir. And next question, can I install the software on more than one computer thinking of home use? So the home use licensing still exists. And uh, there is a form uh, off of the Autodesk website. Uh, we'd be happy to send you guys, or you can just uh, go to the Autodesk.com website and search for home use licensing. Uh, but there is a form that you have to submit. It will ask for your uh, company name, uh, contract ID or serial number, and you submit that, and they will send you back an activation code uh, to activate that software. But yep, the home use licensing still works. So if you've got a desktop at work and you travel with a laptop or have the uh, machine at home that you work remotely uh, in today's environment, as a lot of us are doing, uh, and you need to activate that home use license, yes, that is still valid, and uh, Autodesk will still work with you on that. Next question, does a user need to log out of the software to be able to reassign it? Uh, once you unassign the software from them, um, again, it could it could be minutes, it could take a couple hours. Uh, I have not seen it take more than a day uh, on the unassignment. Um, but if the CAD software that they're using while you unassign it is open, it's not going to shut it down. It will remain open, but the next time they try to launch the software after it's been unassigned, that's when the uh, trigger would be uh, initiated there on the screen and you'd see that, hey, there's no license available or 
if the software is no longer assigned to you, please contact your contract administrator. Next question pertains to a specific contract expiration date. We have a customer whose license expires in September of 2022. They want to know if they lose anything by swapping out to single user licenses now. That, that is a particular one, to my knowledge, uh, I don't think you can switch until you're closer to your expiration date. Correct. And I do see your, your contract uh, information in here. We can certainly, your contact information, excuse me, we can get some specific information about that scenario yep. for your particular company. Yeah, that one, we can follow up one-to-one uh, -one on that one. But, yes, you do have to be close to your, uh, and I think it's actually within 30 days of your contract renewal date. Uh, so you do have to be close to the renewal date to uh, trigger anything early. Uh, otherwise, it just happens automatically at the renewal date itself. How will the new system handle users going to multiple sites and using different computers? It is how you are logged into the software. So when you launch the software, uh, if you're going to another machine or to another uh, site or another company, uh, log out of your machine uh, before you leave. And when you get to the uh, new machine, log in as a different user. Uh, log in to the AutoCAD or Inventor or Vault Professional, depending on which one you're using as a single user. Log in as your user account. It will go in and verify that your licensing uh, is valid, and it'll let you log right in. I did see one here. Uh, on the Vault Basic, does this affect Vault Basic licensing? It does not. Uh, Vault Basic does not use a license. Uh, you just have to have CAD on the machine for it to be activated. So as um, as long as you still have Inventor or AutoCAD installed, the uh, Vault Basic uh, will be installed and still work just fine. So yeah, there's no change there needed on the Vault Basic side as you don't have to manage your license because it is uh, one of the, the free vaults. Uh, or the only free vault uh, that comes with the uh, the CAD and uh, package, whether it's AutoCAD or Inventor. Next question uh, concerning security and the ability to use the Autodesk portal. There's a concern with company policy that a given account won't be able to manage licenses through the portal, and they want to know can licenses be managed outside the portal. Uh, no, licenses are, as far as assignment goes, are only managed inside of the, the Autodesk, the uh, managed.autodesk.com website. Um, so that's where they are assigned from. And then the users have their own username and password. Uh, the password the users get to set up when they uh, validate their account or create their account once they're sent the uh, welcoming email. Or they can go into their account and change their password at any time, but that one cannot be controlled from the uh, the IT side of the security policy, that is through the Autodesk uh, portal itself, but the users can uh, change their own password as often as they would like. I have a question here with multiple shift workers. Is it, does the system allow to change the assigned user by shift? Say if uh, user one has left for the day, can we go ahead and assign his license to user two? If they're using the same machine, uh, it can be assigned to whatever user is logged into that machine. But as far as shifts go, I'm not sure that that would work because sometimes it can take up to 24 hours for the assignment to uh, be initiated. Um, I've seen it where it's within 15 minutes, sometimes a couple of hours. We've had support cases where it was right at 24 hours before they received the email. Um, I'll make a note of that one and follow up with some of the Autodesk guys and we will Definitely get back to you with a direct answer on that one. We're currently using two contracts. How do I tell who is using which license? Can I see that in the portal? Yes, you should be able to. If they are already using the uh, single user there, we should be able to go in here by user and if you click on one of the users there, let's see here. I don't have any assigned to me, uh, but as I picked on this, if I had any products assigned, they would be displayed right here. 
So uh, under the by user as a uh, primary or secondary admin, uh, under the user management by user, you pick on the username and then your assigned products would be listed right here. And Mark, if I can build off this, can you go ahead and click on that reporting seat usage, bottom left hand side of your screen? Yes, sir. Uh, I think also the, this particular question might be tied to having a reporting system similar to LM Tools where I can see in real time who's got licenses checked out. Absolutely. The system. The system itself does make allowances to show you usage by product with a standard subscription purchase, where you can see how often your users are in software. As far as specific end user information, that is something that's tied to what's called premium subscription, where there's a reporting mechanism enabled with that product line and that offering, where you can see a given user, how many days a week that particular user is in the software, and you can sort it by, say, a month, three months, six months, a year at a time. There are different mm -hmm. filters for that. I'm just scrolling through the, the questions here, see if we... No worries have any that we haven't addressed. Uh, Richard, yes, that is correct there. So the log out and log in, uh, working from the home and the office, absolutely. If you're using the home use office licensing, um, logging out of one to log back into the other, yes, that would that would be perfectly fine. Uh, so Tim had asked, uh, does the email invitation include the reason the licensing is being changed? No, it does not. It just says you have been assigned a seat of Inventor or AutoCAD or whatever the release, you know, AutoCAD Electrical, AutoCAD Mechanical, uh, 3DS Max, whatever you're being assigned. Uh, the email just states that you have been assigned the seat uh, and you can log in to activate that licensing. So even if they don't have it installed at the time, they'll still receive the email that They've been assigned this seat, and you know it's, it's not going to appear just because of that. They would have to have the software installed, but then once it's in their once it's in their queue or in their uh, assigned to them inside the portal, then they could activate it. I have a question here. We use Autodesk products locally and on Citrix. Do we need to log out of a given system before logging in to a new system to use the software? Yes. Yep. If you're going to change systems there, you wouldn't want to log out of your uh, current environment uh, to log into the new one. And Curtis has asked, is Autodesk getting rid of the multi-user licenses in the future? And that is the way they are leading, yes, uh, which is part of the reason we put this webinar together is they're doing their uh, their current, I think, promotion is still going the two to one. Uh, so every multi-user licensing that you had in, uh, in your environment, so if you had four, uh, you were getting a two-for-one trade-in. So the four multi-use were going to eight single-user or named user licensing. And uh, But yes, they are moving away from that uh, old network licensing module, multi-user licensing, into the, uh, the named user, the standalone licensing. Um, here's one, the PDMC, the product design and manufacturing is considered legacy. Uh, no, the product design and manufacturing uh, collection, that is the accurate, the active uh, module, the product design suites, the factory design suites, the building design suites. Um, those would be the legacy suites that are no longer available for, uh, for purchasing uh, as everything is transitioned over to the collections. However, we still have some customers 
uh, or clients still using that because they, when they bought it, they put it on such a uh, renewal out, a three-year subscription that it was still available at the time. But as those uh, subscriptions come up, uh, they are being converted over to the PDMCs. And there's a question of using FAML, SSO with Active Directory to deal with the administration of user IDs. I can handle that one. Uh, SSO is a possibility with Autodesk products and single user. You do have to have the premium coverage uh, contract level to have that enabled and we can certainly give you some pricing information on that. To my knowledge, there is a minimum seat count of 50 seats or greater to be able to do that, however. Thank you, Dave. So uh, we are seeing some questions pop in here on if we take advantage of that uh, two-for-one promotion, uh, how does that affect the cost? Uh, I will be honest, I am not going to try and guess what that is, but I will absolutely have your uh, Hagerman sales rep contact you on that to make sure they're giving you the accurate information. And Joshua has said we have six multi-users. Uh, if we do the trade-in to, to get 12, but we only need 10, uh, yes, that is something that uh, Autodesk will work with you on as well. If you don't need the 12, you only need the 10, absolutely. So here's one, um, David is still running Inventor 2017 and AutoCAD 2017, will that still affect us? Um, it will affect you on the new product. Um, if you're still running 2017, uh, you've still got access to using the older release there. Um, so that's still gonna work just as it is. You would not have to do anything there, but on the 2020 or 2021, when you do upgrade, that is when the, uh, the licensing portal would come in there. Uh, but it will affect, uh, what is supported on the old releases as the newer ones come forward. So Autodesk has, uh, you know, the current release is 2021, and so you've got so many releases back that is supported. Um, Hello. That falls in line there. And there was a uh, recent change in the number of versions back you can now mm -hmm. install. It had been three releases back for years and years, mm -hmm. uh, except for some legacy uh, considerations that someone switched from a maintenance contract to a subscription contract. As of Monday, November 2nd, customers now when purchasing single user licenses can go five versions back instead of three. Yep. So 2021 is current, so you can go back to 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016 now. Uh, not too bad. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, so, Garrett, just uh, sure. up in here that uh, one network licensing uh, costing 200 will get you two single user licensing costing the 200. So, 100 each if you want to think of it that way. As an example. Any others coming in here? So Cody's asked a question here. Um, does the account rule change to admin during the transition? Uh, he's not set as a contract admin said as a contract admin, not as a primary or secondary admin. Uh, no, if you are the contract admin, you can still make all the changes there. Uh, we just have different levels of admin, uh, I guess, credentials or permission levels inside the uh, accounts portal uh, to allow you to assign and unassign uh, software. Do you have a question here? What if a user doesn't switch his licensing type before the 30-day cutover? And the answer to that is your license file as it stands now with multi-user seats that are subscription-based 
the expiration date in the license file itself is 30 days after the contract expires. If the user forgot to change to the new single user license in that time period, you wouldn't be able to check out a network version. We'd have to reset the license, and there's a procedure to do that. Mm -hmm. Installation reset it so that that user would see the startup screen where you can pick sign in or use network license. That user would just click sign in to authenticate and use the software again. That can Correct. be done after the 30 day window. Yep. Yeah, so th that is kind of piggybacking there. What, uh, so the, the network license file uh, is, has always been when Autodesk generates those 30 days on top of your expiration. So if your contract was through January 15th, the network license file would expire on February 15th and or February 14th in that case. So they're always put that 30 day buffer in there. It's still there now on the contract live date. It's just after that expiration, that is when it would no longer work. And you're, hey, I can't get into the software today because I don't have a network license. Well, the license file has expired and that would force us to uh, enable the new licensing module there in your environment if that were the case. I'm just scrolling through. I do not see any new questions. Okay. But make sure I am not overlooking something here. So Tim has asked a question here. I see it popping in. Um, will we no longer need to have LM tools uh, or add the license file to the server? Uh, once the transition has happened in your environment there, Tim, uh, that is correct. Uh, LM tools will no longer be needed there uh, as that license file would no longer be utilized because the multi-user is transitioning or the network licensing is transitioning over to the uh, named user or single user licensing module. And John has asked, and Garrett, if you can type back and answer this one for me, uh, how long is the active trade-up uh, subscription pricing in effect for the uh, two-for-one deal? Few more coming in there. Scroll back up to make sure we don't miss any. All right, thank you, Garrett. Uh, so, John, the promotion there for the trade up is available at your next renewal. So, it is good for that. So Brian has asked a question, uh, how does this affect the Vault server? Do we need to list the server as a separate user? Uh, so I'm going to guess here that we installed the Vault client on the server for testing and connectivity purposes, but not actual usage, check in, check out. Uh, so if that being the case, uh, you would not have to have a dedicated uh, user for the server. 
uh, if, if that scenario is active. Uh, what I just described there. Uh, you could just log in as your own username there, verify connectivity, make sure everything's working, and then log out uh, before moving back to your uh, normal desktop. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, so Jeremy has uh, just replied back, stepping back a minute on the, uh, the trade-up subscription pricing. Uh, it's the first renewal after August 7th of 2020. So your first contract renewal uh, following August 7th of this year, the uh, promotion there, the two for one is still active. All right. Well, Ms. Ashley, I don't see any other questions coming in here. Okay. Well, thank you guys uh, for the presentation and answering all those questions. Um, I will let you know that if you think of additional questions, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email you received from GoToWebinar. We can get those to uh, your sales rep or someone to get them answered. Um, as we close down the session today, you'll be prompted to fill out a short survey, and we do ask that you take a few moments to fill that out for us, and it will just pop up as we close down. Also, a reminder that tomorrow you should receive an email, which will contain a link to the recording of this presentation. And if there's nothing further, is there, are there any last questions you want to get to? I, I do have one here from Bruce. Uh, can users log into multiple, compu multiple computers at the same time? Uh, if they're assigned multiple seats, yes. If they're only assigned one seat, then that would be a violation. They would only need to be logged into one machine for uh, the access to the software at one time. Okay, great. All right. Thank well, you, everyone. Yes, thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for attending, um, and have a great day.